right, all right. Welcome, welcome to the first ever Watchtower and Awakening podcast. All right, it's happening. We're here. This is less of a, an episode. It's more of a, an introduction to myself and my co-host Norris. I'm a former Charles Witness, and he is a former Catholic. So I decided I'd preach from a different platform. But I thought I'd just give you a little bit of an insight to the name Watchtower and Awakening. You probably already know this if you've got anything to do with Charles Witnesses or you've ever seen them on your doorstep. Their magazines are called The Watchtower and The Awake. So it's a little uh, homage to my upbringing because I spent most of my time elbow deep in Watchtower and Awake magazines. And uh, I eventually became a skeptic and my skepticism led me to atheism. So I eventually free thought my way through the kind of things that are published in The Watchtower and Awake. Hence the name, Watchtower and Awakening. So feel free to visit watchtowerandawakening.com. You'll find all the links there. Uh, I'm mostly available on Twitter at Apostate Awake, capital A Apostate, capital A Awake. Feel free to tweet me. Um, any kind of feedback would be wonderful. Tell me what to do, what not to do, or give me a few suggestions. Uh, I'll take everything into consideration. So without further ado, here we go. All right, everybody in, all two of us, raise the drawbridge. Okay, we're here and we're live from the top of the watchtower. No. We're live. No. And um, we're live. <gasps> we're live. We're live. Yes. Big moment we've all been waiting for. Ah, okay. No answer. We straw. So, uh, watch Sean Awakening's first podcast. Are you excited? No. <laughs> we should be. Of course, yeah. Uh, okay, so this is my special guest, uh, slash co anchor. That's co. I thought you said anchor. no swearing. <laughs> I said you call co anchor. Oh, brilliant. Co anchor. Yeah, co anchor. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I wanted to say special guest, but then I thought, then if you come back, then next month or something. No, I don't plan to come back. Just next month, I'm hoping that we'd be able to actually, um, so we're going to be able to get some questions from some Twitter people. Mm. Uh, Norris does not know anything about uh, Twitter because he's a luddite and he has no social media skills whatsoever. Which is why I thought it would be good for him to be on, on a podcast. Wait a minute. Because... This is through choice. This, oh, yeah, yeah. Personal, you know, yeah this is choice. Uh, he's, personal choice. He's I have so, to choose not so to be popular. a twit he's so, uh, person. He's so popular in real life that he, he needs he needs no comfort from uh, the digital age. <clears throat> right, okay. Uh, right. Watch on awakening.com, uh, Twitter, uh, Facebook. Um, send me emails directly. Uh, this is what I'm after. I'm after questions that might be able to send us uh, off on a bit of a of a tangent, tangible, tangent, yeah. Um, th- then, then I'll actually have a, you know, uh, at whatever says, and then we can just go into a discussion straight from there. So you can actually give us some kind of feedback. Um, if, if you if you want to be mentioned, uh, just let me know and I'll, I'll give you a shout out. Uh, if you want to just share with me a bit of a personal uh, story, a, a few of you already have actually, I've had a few emails. What happens if you, if someone gets mentioned, how does that improve their lives? It's part of the digital age that you don't understand. It's okay. kind of like a, like imagine if a lot of people listened, then, yeah. they, then they would they would they would ask a question, and I would be like, uh, I'd say like, um, you know, Sheila from Dorset wants to know, and if and if Sheila from Dorset's listening, she'd be like, oh, that's my question. He likes that question. He wants hmm. to talk about my topic, and then they feel enriched because like they've added, they've contributed to the debate. Sold, <laughs> sold. I hope I get a mention. <laughs> Hey, I'm, I'm Norris from Manchester. <laughs> uh, right, introductions, that's done. Uh, hi, I'm uh, the voice of Watch Down Awakening, and Norris is just Norris. Hello, everyone. I'm Norris. Uh, okay, um, usually, or should I say in future, this is obviously the pilot episode, uh, but usually I'll, I'll, be, I'll be picking a theme. Um, so we might run with, it might be Jehovah's Witness related specifically, or it might just be uh, religion, atheism, agnosticism, Reason, science, weird stuff. I suppose it depends on what time of year. You know, we could, we could do something uh, Halloween during Halloween. We could do something Christmas during Christmas. Could. What, whatever's going on at the time. Uh, but I'll, I'll pick an actual thing. But just as it goes now, I thought we'd um, thought we'd shoot from the hip. I like shooting from the hip. 
Mr. Watchtower. <laughs> What's your name, by the way? I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, I, I just guess I was just the voice of Watch Away. Okay. So, uh, it's fine. I won't call you by name. You've got me double your air. Say, like. say, we're going to shoot from the hip. We're going to shoot from the hip. I like shooting from the hip. Full stop. Full stop. <laughs> I mean, like, every time you say my name, I could just put a beat. You, you know, like, because um, on, uh, yeah. you know, like on Kill Bill, you don't find out what her name is. Yeah. And when anyone else says it, you go, Ooh. Why don't you want anybody to know your name? Why? Yeah. Um, oh, funny, funny stuff. Because I'm trying to be like, uh, I know this sounds ironic being that I'm speaking now, but... Um, and millions of people are listening right now, so <laughs> it's really important you get this next sentence right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, for all the Jehovah's Witnesses out there. Yeah. Uh, really, um, because I, it, it was kind of like, um, it sounds cheesy, but it's kind of like, a, in, like an, a, in a Batman vibe, yeah? I'm not, I'm not me under my name, I'm just the entity of Watcher and Awakening, so... Okay. I, I'm I'm representative of the uh, people that have been deconverted or are deconverted going through the process. Okay. So the idea is, I I am just representative of I, you know I could have been anyone I could have been in any one of their congregations I could have been the son I could have been the husband like whatever. Uh, so instead of it just being oh look at me I'm this guy which it kind of is it seems weird because it is a bit egotistical for me to start a podcast and speak you know and sort of put out a podcast. Because it just isn't it. Because it's like all about me, a little bit about you. It is egotistical in one way, but I know how passionate you are about this, and I know that this is something that you talk about anyway. So it makes sense that you would like <coughs> to help others who might be thinking about the same kind of things, and would like somebody else's perspective. Exactly the point. Uh, I don't even. Prefer them in any way, shape, or form. So that, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, the, the whole the whole point was the, the point of the website and the point of the podcast is to it, it's to create a, a a creative it's a creative outlet, but it's also to destroy Christianity. No, it it was it, it was right, but I, I've already explained this in the in, in the intro that I may or may not use. So I might as well say here as well because I don't need to. Um, but. The point was when I was when I was thinking about what I'm passionate about, you'll know that everything I everything I read, listen to, you know, everything any debate I get involved in, any any petition I sign, doesn't matter what that thing is, it tends to be somewhere around the religion or science, or it's a clash between the two. I know some people don't think there's a clash between the two. But, science and religion uh, clash. <laughs> I think I need to join Twitter. <laughs> if if you if you're like a new um sorry, I'm ignoring the audience I am. Uh the third person, kind of like uh, you, you might not know this. Do, do, do you listen to um, the dogma debate with David Smalley? No, I know we know David Smalley. We do know David like, Smalley. There's another David Smalley. Okay, he, he, he has, the, he has the, the dogma debate, and uh, they always refer to the fourth listener like you know, like there's another, another there's one more person listening to the show. Who's that? that well, that's what I'm saying. God, there's, there's, there's the fourth <laughs> listener because they, because they pretend like there's only one person listening, so um. everybody calls himself the fourth listener. Nice. So I guess it's just me and you, so we're waiting for a third listener. We are. My mum. <laughs> yeah, but your mum will not be listening to this, and you know that. She won't. But if she ever does, hi, mum. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, put, I put that on the website. Did I mention www.watchdownawakening.com? <laughs> um, yeah, I put, Cheap. I put on the website um, uh, that, obviously, I don't really speak to my parents about this too much, but at least I've created um, I created a nice resource for them. So if, if, if it ever does come up and we ever do want to sort of sit down and talk about it, then I've compiled resources, I've put um, debates there online. Uh, there's links to other podcasts that I need to update. So I apologise if um, Hugo and Jake are listening. I hope they are. Uh, that, you know, Who's Hugo and Jake? Hugo and Jake, uh, they do the Bible Reloaded podcast. And, okay. Uh, so this is where there's the, the social media thing. Yes. Uh, yeah, exactly. yes. Um, so Hugo and Jake, they're yeah. like, they're like a, an American version right. of us, but funnier, and they do more dick jokes. Funnier, they know more, and they have more yeah. listeners. They have more <laughs> listeners, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they said, they, they said uh, via, via Twitter that they might, be able, they might be doing the podcast full time. So why don't we just save this the time here and just direct people to their podcast? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm 
<laughs> stick them on your website. <laughs> stick them on your website. Just put, uh, what are they called? Luke and, no, Jake and... Jake and Hugo. Jake and Hugo. <laughs> Just say, if you're interested in listening to something related to my website, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> follow so this link. Instead of a podcast, we'll just have sound bites of me and you going... Uh, yeah. The new thing we've found is, uh, is a podcast called The Bible Reloaded with yeah. Jake and Hugo. Yeah, and it, and perfect. It's got like a proper good intro, intro yeah. to you. Man, or... If you would prefer to listen to something that has less value, listen to this. <laughs> yeah. My podcast. If you want funny, well researched things, uh, we're, yeah. we're just going to direct you to uh, the Bible Reloaded. If you want, um, if you want well articulated sentiment, we're going to send you to uh, the Thinking Atheist. Yeah. <laughs> if you want some uh, some actual information, yeah. that's not just two guys sitting around drinking wine. You compile a goblets at the top of our tower. You compile a lead table of podcasts relating to this kind of topic that well religion science all this sort of stuff um and then you know you've got your champions league spot your relegation zone too much football can you imagine if we have any american listeners they won't, they won't even understand what just happened i know they'd just be like what sack it the world sack series it. Yeah. Sack <laughs> it. Like when, I just sorry americans I, just, I have actually american cousins so i'm allowed to be racist to americans <laughs> Oh, oh, what a horrible thing to say in the 21st century. That's not right, is it? Now suddenly I hope Jake and Hugo aren't listening. Oh, <laughs> because um, then, no. Because America. then, then I, I won't get any retweets or anything. Mm. There'll be no direct into this podcast. Exactly. Um, right, okay. Yeah, so on, so on, if America was good enough for Christopher Hitchens, it's good enough for me. Oh, yeah, that, that was it, wasn't it? I was apologising to Jake and Hugo because I haven't updated it for a while. And I, didn't, I wasn't aware of their podcast when I created that page of the website. So we can be updated by the time I'm... By the time I've got this out. Yeah. Yes, brilliant. Right, okay. Let's, let's try and streamline this a little bit. Fire away. Yes. Ask me a okay. question. Um, I am the expert okay. about my life. So the first question is, is, well, it's not even a question. It's just, I want a statement from you. Um, the, the first question is just simply, uh, religious stance yes. in, in reference to your upbringing. So, uh, what is my religious stance in reference to my upbringing? Yeah, okay. well, I mean, obviously. Oh, uh, yeah, I was, I was raised in Manchester as a Catholic um, my parents are both Catholics, and unlike most Catholics, my mum and dad actually have a a colourful pedigree, if you like. Um, my mum actually uh, became a nun when she left school, and she was a nun for 15 years. So that's a proper serious... I know, uh, can I just interrupt and just say, um, I know like, we're calling you Norris, and we're being a bit silly and stuff like that, so yeah. people, people, will probably, people will probably understand that Part of what we're talking about is going to be serious, and part of it's just going to be stupid. So, the, so the I'm man, being serious. Yeah, but, uh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, because, because you just said I'm Jewish, and yeah. like that, people might think, "Oh, now he's going to tell us something <laughs> ridiculous." Like his mum was a nun, his dad was trained to be a priest. That would be ridiculous, especially if you're. Yeah, but you're making a leap of faith there, Mister Watchtower. <laughs> yeah, the leap of faith being that someone is listening to this. <laughs> And the leap of faith that whoever is listening yes. to, whoever was listening to this, That's made it this out. far. <laughs> right, so I'm going to have to edit it. you are you're gonna have to okay. get this bit right at the start in the first thirty seconds. Uh, yeah, so I was raised in Manchester, parents Catholics. My mum became a nun when she left school. Uh, she was a nun for fifteen years. She lived in France, um, and my dad uh, actually trained to be a Catholic priest. Uh, it takes about six years to train to be a Catholic priest. And he went to a seminary in Spain and did five years of six years. Now, my mum, she, when she was very young, she, she started to work in a, in a nursing home. And she was, she was, she was, she, from a very young age, she was driven to want to help people in need, right? She had this fantasy that she could devote her whole life to helping the poor, the sick, the rest. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. This is why I refer to you under, under a pseudonym as Sister Mary Agatha of the Poor. Exactly. Well done. And uh, uh, <laughs> no. And and basically, she um, there was a, a nursing home up the road from where she lived, and I think from about ten or something, she she got a part time job working at this nursing home, not paid obviously, a voluntary job. Yeah. And she used to go there before school, and she used to help out in the kitchen. She used to she used to help with the cleaning. She used to help, you know, just keeping people company and stuff like that. And as she got a little bit older, through her teens, the the nuns who ran this this nursing home, uh, essentially persuaded her to become a nun. They said, "Look, 
please join us. You know, you're amazing at caring for people. You're amazing at, um, at, at what you do here. Everybody loves you here because you know you're so you're so generous with your time and your your affection and all this sort of stuff. And she saw that as a vehicle that she could use to 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 actually devote a life to giving to people in a really pure sense of the word. Yeah. Now it could have been another direction. She could have she could have been a, she could have started working for a charity, a local charity. And then become a volunteer, this, or this, I don't know. This is one of those, this one of those things <coughs> um, that I, you know, like because I'm an atheist, people think that all I want to do is bash religion, and it's, it's, it's it isn't the case. I, I believe that I believe that religion is a poison, and it's poison served to the mind and the towards the development of civilization. I to, I'm totally all for that, and I will argue that um, till the cows come home, as they say, which brings me to another podcast. Can't believe it. I just I just segued in by accident. The herd mentality of Adam Reeks. Right. Yeah, listen to that one. Uh, that's another one that's linked onto the site as well. To remind me of that. It's another one that's uh, better than this one. It's another one that's better than this one. It's uh, it's Adam the list. Uh, Adam is doing some good work in the fact that I think he actually I think he's doing it pretty much full time now. This is just his thing. Oh, that was a bit jealous. Yeah, Ooh, very jealous. It was yeah. a bit jealous. Oh, Adam Adam's put loads of research in. He does a great podcast, but then again, he does spend all his time doing it. You know, yeah. he doesn't have to have a real job like real me. Job like me. Yeah. <gasps> um. Okay. So. Bashing Catholics and stuff. Don't get me wrong. I think the Catholic Church. I've, I've had this argument with a few people. Um, the Catholic Church. I just I view as an ancient criminal organization. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very successful. It not only incorporates many of the mafia, but it's it's better than the mafia in the, in the fact that it is. It's got a, it's got a wonderful you know representation. Uh, it's 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 global. I totally agree. Well, if you hadn't stopped me in my tracks, I was about to say, and also this nursing home Ooh. allowed my mum. <laughs> To continue to deal cocaine and heroin to the local children, because when you wear the outfit of a nun and you help there's the a lot elderly, of places to hide bags of you help, you help. There's a lot of places to hide, you know. Uh, and also, people don't no don't wonder, suspect no that you're Jesus. a hardened criminal and that you're a, you're a drug dealer and a and a. a, a menace to society. So, as like, it were. so your dad was just like a priest pimp. No, my dad's like, like young boys. I'm not joking, I'm not joking. It's too cheap, too cheap, too cheap. Right, wait, okay. Sorry. My, my point was, we're going back to being serious for a sec. Okay. Um, religion retards society. Mm -hmm. It stops us from doing, you know, like, we, we'd, we'd all be like in flying cars and like, you know, could go to the moon on holidays and stuff. If it yeah. If it wasn't for religion, right? Um, but, like, even though I disagree with the things that my parents think about and the things that they think are real, true, mm -hmm. um, you know, scripture like everything um it doesn't mean that they're bad people do you know what i mean it, it, even though my upbringing i think was uh you know wasn't based on fact it was based on feeling it doesn't mean that they're bad people they did the best in their minds that they could do and and that, that's why even though i think a that, tiny tiny mind <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think that even though Catholicism is ridiculous, individual Catholics, like your mum, all she's ever done is help people. She speaks multiple languages, she travels, she goes places, she genuinely helps out and she would give anything that she had to make sure that nobody else was suffering. Mm. She was like the opposite of Mother Teresa. Oh! Wow. That was it. That was right. Although, that was Mother although... Teresa, my mum would definitely cite Mother Teresa as an inspiration. So it goes to show that... Are you trying to tell that religious people can be contradicted, right? Wow. Just drop that bomb. Now, um, my dad was... Dad decided that he wanted to become a priest because he felt that that was one way that he would be able to make a difference in the world. Um, and I know that he was never, he was never money motivated. He was never career motivated as such. So he decided to go off to the seminary and train to be a priest. And he hacked it for five years. And uh, after about five years, he decided that he couldn't bear the thought of living a life without a family, a wife, kids, all that sort of stuff. And obviously to become a Catholic priest, that's one of the things you have to give up. Um, and Hence uh, sexual repression and seeing, uh, 
seem like touching kids up as exactly the same as a sin like missing a job. So, yeah, so when, my, so when my dad says that he, he, he couldn't bear the thought of having a, a life without a wife and children, what he essentially said what, what essentially he was saying was he has a very sensitive penis. And the church would never be able to gratify his needs. He, he was he was such a good person that he thought wife or kids, not wife and kids, wife or kids, and he thought, you know what, I'm going to go with the wife. Yeah, and uh, and also there were no attractive altar boys at the time. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so basically, my dad quit the seminary, came home, tail between his legs. To be honest with you. It, it was well, what, it, what, kind, what kind of person quits a position like that? I mean, it's not like the Pope has ever quit. Oh, oh, oh Pontifex uh, burn. Yeah, but yeah, my dad got there first, though. So my dad was the first quitter. Okay, so he wins that yeah, accolade. Um, no, so basically, my, my dad decided to quit the priesthood um, for a normal life, time. so to speak. Um, and, you know, I think he came back again tail between his legs, not sure what he was going to do with his life, but he knew that whatever it was going to take yeah, to sacrifice... He had something else between his legs and it was being on. And it was hard also. Hard to leave. Hard. The church. And the real Let's the church move on. Uh, so, no, actually, yeah, this is another thing my dad said. He actually realised that... I need, and my dad's quite a hard... My dad's quite religious, right? Um, my mum's religious. But my dad's very religious in his own way. But my dad's a real... I, I will come on to this in a sec if you ask me. But my dad's... Um, he's very religious, but... And even though he's a Catholic, and you could argue he's a hardcore Catholic because he goes through the motions of a hardcore Catholic. He goes to church every week. He plays the organ at church. He kind of... You know, he, he takes he takes an active role in the church. But when I talk to him about it, I'm always surprised that he's actually quite um, vigilante in one way. He, he, he sort of has his own perspective on what spirituality is about but it just so happens that the catholic church is the church that he's been in his whole life and therefore he accepts all the shit that, that, that comes with exactly, it exactly how the, the churches of uh, I, know, I know i stay on track but i just want to say that, that that's exactly how what all of the churches have gradually they've gradually evolved over time and i've, I've pointed this out loads of times to people um, and now i get to do it Say on air, not really on air. I'm just going to convert it. Basically, to basically, yeah. what you do now, we're having this chat, and then just you and me are going to listen to this again. <laughs> and then, like, wow, yeah, wow, we're so wise. Yeah, and if anyone else does listen to it, we're going to have to read their comments. What knobheads? <laughs> what do they know? Who are these two foolish people? Yeah. Like, like, who are these two Twitter people? Is that what people footballing. say? Is that what people say? Don't you know what footballing round? Say. Um, sorry. Uh, sorry. We're, we're alienating our American counterparts. Oh, no. Sorry, America. <laughs> Have I just said that? Sorry, <laughs> sorry America. Sorry, sorry for the red card. I thought it was in a film just then. <laughs> sorry, America. And uh, while we're at it, I'd like to apologise to China as well. <laughs> I don't know. And just Africa. Go around, just go around. Well, yeah, I mean, we do. We um, do in the, as, as British people, we do we do accept some kind of historical responsibility for our our rape and pillaging of other lands. Yeah, we did. We you know we did a bit. We gave back a few silly things that we used to have in our museums and stuff. You know because it didn't actually belong to us. We just had to steal it. The only people I'm not sorry to is the Scots. I'm really glad <laughs> that the Scotch. Uh, the Scotch. I'm really glad that we uh, won that one. We won that one. Oh, that is bad. Yeah, um, but no. I'm really looking forward to a comment that says it's Scottish. Not Scotch. It's not that. Scotch. Scotch eggs. Yeah, you Scotch an egg, don't you? You do. It's like, well, they're a Scotch yeah. human being. I think, you know what? If if I had my way, I would I would definitely change the name of Scotland to North England. <laughs> oh, well. I'm sure some people like some people. Like, <laughs> if, if they are American, they won't really realize how insulting we're being. But oh, but if you, yeah, but by you just saying that, what you're implying is that Americans are too stupid to realize that yeah, yeah, England obviously. and Scotland are next to each other. <laughs> <laughs> no. sorry, 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 sorry. You know, I don't know where we're going with this. I, I, I think we're just going to we're just going to systematically alienate everybody, every country. I think that's right though. And then, oh, no, that's probably a good way because then 
we'll we'll do we'll do an appropriate culling, and then yeah. our our listeners will be a very select niche market <laughs> audience of. I guess just me and you and whichever one of our friends we insist on playing this to. And next week, we will find ways to be little Africa. Thank you. Goodbye. Sorry. Can I just say for the record that um, the only reason I said those things about Scotland is because I hate Scottish people. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. I'm a, no. I'm a quarter Scotch, so I'm allowed to. No, I'm not a quarter Scotch at all. If I was, I'd kill myself. No, uh, it's because I've got lots of Scottish friends and uh, and I'm allowed to take the mick out of Scottish I know, people I know, because I I'm English and that makes me better. Ah, oh, I'm only joking. I'm only joking in Scotland. In, oh, sorry, Scotland. Sorry, Scotland. Oh, wait, what are we doing? This is becoming racist. I know it is, isn't it? it Why is. are we racist? Honestly, we've got a lot of Scottish friends. Am I racist? You are right now. I can be quite racist when I'm joking, but... The thought of what racism actually is makes me feel physically sick. Well, no. But when it comes to having a joke well, about it and a laugh, yeah. I can do it. But it's like, mate, it makes me feel awful afterwards. Yeah, but, but, now, but now you stated that, that's like a caveat, isn't it? So now it's you, not a caveat you, you, because you, I definitely you, hate Scottish people. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I don't hate Scottish Honestly, people. We've got a lot of Scottish friends and only three quarters of them are addicted to awful heroin. And yeah. And yeah, yeah. Friends. Oh, for all you Stuart Lee fans out there, a little... Uh, a little, oh, no. and uh, I'd like I'd, as people. Yeah, but we're not yeah. being horrible Scottish we're, people, really. We are really, aren't we? we yeah, well, it's we, horrible, we, isn't we it? Are, but we don't, we don't mean it. We Scottish do. people, if if anybody is Scottish and they're listening to this, or if anybody's just offended by the fact that we've said the things we've said, um, yeah. I'd just like to say that, however much I hate anyone, I could never hate anybody as much as I hate myself. So that. In some way, yeah. um, it kind of relieves me of responsibility for my hatred for anyone. Even though I'm, I'm saying that, like, I do hate anyone. Like, I don't hate anyone because of the race or religion or anything. Um, we're going too far into this. Sorry. We're trying, we're try, we're trying to stick with wow. your upbringing. And now, we've, now we've just, we've simultaneously alienated our wow. entire crowd whilst being racist. Wow. You even stuck in an, a, a, an insult towards Africa. Oh, no, you said we're going to later insult Africa. I think it would be yeah. good if... Uh, if the police get hold of this and we get arrested for it, it's a good publicity for the website. It would actually. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell is going on? Right, stop it. Sorry. We're gonna stay on track. Right. Okay. Did you stop it's me about my mum and dad? Do you want me to tell you any more about mum and dad or not? No. Is that it? God, no. God, no. God, God you know. Oh, you're a god. Um, um, they were both invited to a wedding of some mutual friend who I don't know who it, that is, but some mutual friend and. As you can imagine, if you've got someone who is a nun and someone who's been training to be a priest at a wedding, the likelihood is that they're going to be introduced because they'll have something in common to discuss. Yeah, not, not only did they have something in common, they were they could also be inebriated and both obviously sexually repressed. Wow. And You're talking about my parents right now, you know that, don't you? Um, the point is, okay, well. to try and keep it brief, yeah. uh, that <clears throat> my mum was planning to go back to the nunhood after the crisis was over. But instead... But instead, within God. 10 days of meeting at this wedding, yeah. my mum and dad were engaged to be wed. Within three months of becoming engaged, they were married. And within two years of being married, they had three children. In that respect, it's like they probably went forth and multiplied. And so, yeah, and, and so... And that was like 33, my mum ran me today and said that they'd met 33 years ago today, right? So it's quite You're crazy. 31. Exactly. It's quite crazy how their life turned in such a, an extreme direction. You know, it's it. we talk about career changes. We talk about uh, trying to, you know, oh, I think I might get a different job. I mean, their lives took a U-turn in a weird yeah. kind of sense. But... The amazing thing is that they, they kind of, like I say, they've, they've stuck together. And interestingly, I found out recently that the only reason that they had three kids is because they didn't have four. Clarify that statement. The only reason that they didn't have, th that they didn't have more than three kids is because they didn't have four. Clarify that statement. They didn't use a condom or any form of contraception. They continued to make love like all good Catholic people do, without unsheathed. any contraception, unsheathed, 
Um, and they just didn't procreate again. Uh, basically, they would have had more if more would have come, so to speak. So, essentially, because I said to my dad, that's unbelievable. You know, I've got two kids. There's like nearly three years between them. And it's, you know, it's crazy sometimes because you, you feel like you've got the world on your shoulders and, you, you know, you, it's like, how do you manage this? My mum and dad had one in between us. My mum my mom had my brother and then four weeks after giving birth, she was pregnant with me. And then six weeks after giving birth to me, she was pregnant with my other brother. And it just didn't happen to have any more kids. Is it, what, did they just like deliberately hold out on sex for a little while so that she didn't die or something? I, I, I have not. I, I don't want to ask that question. No, fair enough. I wasn't, I wasn't asking that question either. But Well, I mean, I, I'd, I'd ask that question it be hilarious, but you can ask your own mum. Yeah. No, I, th- I said to my dad, you know, did you, <clears throat> how long did you wait before you had, you know, sex, like, sex again? I was straight back in there. So. He said, he said, to be honest, son, he said, you know, when someone's given birth, you have to wait at least two or three weeks. He said, so we just did oral. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, 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 Germany. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just apologise to countries and continents, Russia. We apologise to Russia yet. I've not said anything about Russia we yet. We don't owe Russia any apologies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> After what they did with the gays. <laughs> After what they did. <laughs> but anyway. At the Olympics. Let's, the let's, let's the way they treated those gays at the Olympics. They haven't finished treating the gays at the Olympics. Right, true. Gays love a good treat, though, don't they? No, let's not alienate the gays as well. We're not doing that. No, oh, don't no, say anything. No, no, say not anything. not you being the gayest straight man I've ever met in my life. Exactly. I mean, I on Twitter I even follow like LGBT communities and things like that, uh, and it's simply because I've tweeted in support of. They just randomly follow me because I'm sure everyone just thinks that I'm gay. To be fair, in 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 actual real life, quite a few people think that I'm gay as well. I think it's the way I dance. I think it's the way that you touch men. What they're trying to achieve now, i.e., make money, be powerful, all this sort of stuff, whatever control over people, all this sort of But essentially, most people who subscribe to a religion, they they're thinking about what happens when they die a lot of the time. Yeah. They're thinking about, you know, what's gonna happen when I'm dead? I don't wanna be you know, they're, they're terrified of death. Everyone's terrified of death. I'm pretty scared of death. I'm scared of pain, pretty scared of death. I'm scared of the fact that maybe I'm not gonna be here, but when I'm, not, I th- I, I'm not scared of death. I'm scared of dying. And, okay. And the, and, the, I, and I take uh, I take um, Chris Fritchin's point of view. I know it keeps coming up, but uh, get over it. He's gonna have to keep coming up because he's a heavyweight. He in, always uh, will, won't he? In, in atheist circles. Um. But when when it you know when he, he was explaining, uh, if you don't know who Chris Fritchin's is, um, go and you, kill yourself. You should. Yeah. Either kill yourself or at least to, before you kill yourself, find out about who he him. is and then kill yourself. And, and then either agree with him. Oh, wait, 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 no, before you kill yourself, listen to everything he did as well or read all the stuff he did as well yeah. and then kill yourself. And then agree with him or kill yourself. Yeah. Just a brief summary of what just happened. Uh, not that we need it, but I was expecting to read his digest and he went off on a tangent. So, Sorry. so all, all I wanted to include was, um, you know, he said about scientists, they don't, they don't know. Um, so like so you know they, they might they might have a gap in the knowledge and they'll presume something and then they'll move on and make predictions test whatever and the gap in their knowledge may be filled at some time but they understand that it's a gap in the knowledge yeah. so all I wanted to clarify was um, <coughs> like <clears throat> science can make predictions and it does have gaps in its knowledge and just like Dara O'Brien who is uh, an Irish comedian says uh, is, is a bit of a science geek on the side he does a, he does a hard maths uh, show where do you know Dara O'Brien He's only, is he 40? Yeah, yeah, he's not, he's not as old as you would think he is, is he? He looks about 60. He does. He's, he's funny though. He's... If you're listening to this, Darrell Brain, which you're not. And I hope you never do. Actually, just, let's just not apologise. It's not like we've been all right so far, is it? Um, mm. Yeah, so Darrell Brain says, um, he says, people say, um, oh, science doesn't know everything. <laughs> science knows it doesn't know everything. Otherwise, it'd stop. Yeah. That's the point. So, so when, 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 when you say, oh, there's a gap in the knowledge, they move on, make predictions, the gap may or may not be filled. Like, we, don't, we, don't know, we don't know a lot of things in science, and that's why I say we, I'm not a scientist, but um, science doesn't know everything. It knows, otherwise it'd stop. The problem is, when religious people have faith, they use their faith as the full stop. We don't know everything, therefore God. That's, that's where I have the problem. You can't explain that, therefore God. 
But that's not how science works. After, just through desperation alone, proper desperation, have to sometimes hold the hands up and say, you know what? Rather than try and work this shit out, rather than try and figure out why life's so shit and why I feel so sad right now and why I am so in so much pain right now, I'll, I'd rather choose to believe that there's a God that has it all boxed off, that knows why it's happening and that he knows about me and he loves me and whatever happens, he's thinking about me and even if I die, there's a reason for it and he's got and he's thinking about me. He's thinking, all right, yeah, yeah, it's your turn now. See, and I'm not saying that this is, I'm, I'm not saying this is what I believe, but I can understand why people are so desperate and terrified that they that that they would rather go through their life with a crutch, with a with a with yeah something to with with something that's bigger than themselves that can absorb this pressure and stress and pain and lack of understanding right. and and, let, let and me, that's, just, just let me formulate, let it all go. Just let me formulate my thoughts around that because I've got a couple of points that I want to get to before I lose them. I should really probably have a notepad with me or something. Okay. Um, one, this is why I wanted you to do this podcast is because you're a little bit more you're a little bit more forgiving and a little bit more philosophical than I am. You sort of you take other people's side a little better. And, I, and I, I suppose I need that because I'd just be like, stop doing that, dummy. Whereas you'd be like, oh, well, I can kind of see. Like, it's called like, empathy. It's called, it's called <laughs> empathy. But because I'm a god, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know of empathy. Yeah. Um, right. So, yeah. But, so that's why I wanted you. Secondly, when I was like, um, therefore God, I was actually like, I wasn't really thinking of the sort of, you know, the third world aspect of people that were going through trials and tribulations. I was thinking more of like, I was thinking of like white middle class people, um, usually like England and America, who were sort of trying to disprove science by putting the things in their ears and going, la la la, you can't explain that, therefore God. That you know the people, the, mm-hmm. the kind of people that tweet me or I tweet, mm-hmm. and and it's that that's who I had in mind. Just to clarify, when I okay. when I was like, therefore God, I'm talking about people that should know better and can know better and do have all of the all, all of the. Um, Basically, resources everything that science has provided them with in order to live their lives like that like having a smartphone in their hand in order to actually tweet me and to also be able to say yeah but science doesn't know everything therefore god i, I was talking about those people but I can, I can see i can see the point that you say when when uh, when you say about you know if people are going through trials and tribulations and the you know hunger and and pain and suffering and and using it as a crutch i, I can totally see that but that's why now when we when we do have the opportunity to be able to educate ourselves for free, I'm not saying everybody does, but I'm saying that people that should know better can know better. But there are also white middle class people who, who, right? Look at Bill Gates. Bill Gates has obviously built his career over years, made his fortune. Most people in Bill Gates' situation would probably either keep a kind of a role at Microsoft where they they know what's going on, they turn up, they get a bit of an ego massage at big meetings, at big events, but they employ people to do all the hard work and they just get to kind of take the accolades and even pay yourself a nice salary if you want to, but you're going to get the profits anyway, so it's fine. He could keep that he could he could keep that kind of thing for himself. Yeah. But what he's chosen to do is essentially walk away from it and devote his life to really needy people and 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 Bill Gates I I don't know enough about this so I can I, I can't tell you the details but <laughs> I I've watched, I've watched I've watched documentaries I've read I've read stuff and all I know is that some of it's false I think I know more or less what Bill Gates is about in the sense that it sounds to me like he was obviously very clever and ambitious and when he, as soon as he reached a position of power, he felt a responsibility to people yeah. who, who you know, who were in need, right? Less fortunate, and that feeling of responsibility, that feeling, that empathy that he had for people who, who, who don't have enough, 
and and, and a lot of these I people need to point out that Bill Gates is the happiest by the way. But carry on. That's fine. That's fine. But that, that's good. Uh, well, it's not good. Don't mind. Whatever. Him. Good for uh, him. But he he obviously from a very young age had this this sort of uh, thing going on that he he wanted to help people. And as soon as he was in a position to help people, that's exactly what he did, right? So he did that. The point I think I'm making is yeah, that, oh yeah, oh yeah, the, oh yeah, like this like, tangent too long. The point I think I'm making is that Bill Gates being someone who is one of the wealthiest people in the world mm. feels the pain of those people who are impoverished. Now, there's a lot of people who are part of the church, in inverted commas, whatever that church may be. Yeah, the church. Usually, Churches. we're talking about the Catholic Church or uh, a mainstream Christian church, Muslim church, whatever. Yeah. They, they, s- some of these people who are in relatively affluent situations feel that pain too. But I know that uh, some people would just switch off because it took too long. To I'd, I'd so, switch off. Yeah, I would have switched but, off when yeah. I when I first heard my voice. The point that we're going to take away from this is that the, it's, it, it's funny how in the same world with the same facts and the same things that are going on around the world for everyone, like the information is there for every individual. It's funny how there's a weird little, uh, there's a weird, weird little um, sort of uh, balance going on where some people that would lead them to believe they're for God and some people it would lead them to sort of think, well, God isn't doing anything about this, which is kind of Bill Gates's side. He's like, well... God's not going to do anything about this because he isn't around to do anything about this. So I'm going to do something about this. And if if more people figured out that there is no intervention, or rather, I'm, I'm not saying it's like, oh, if only everybody were an atheist, because you can be an atheist and still be a complete asshole. I'm not saying that you can't. What I'm saying is, if, if, if everybody were to give up the idea that God was going to just step in or God works in mysterious ways, or people like back to Mother Teresa, if, if, if she was if she believed that people that were in or well, I mean, she may not have believed it, but she said that if um that if people were in a lot of suffering, it simply brings them closer to Christ and gives them greater reward in heaven. If you believe that and wash your hands of it, all that's gonna happen is if, because it's untestable, unprovable, unknowable, all that's gonna happen is people are definitely for sure gonna suffer until they die. Yeah. If you try and do something about it. Sooner or later, less people will suffer until they die. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. I'm just condensing that down. Yeah? Okay. We have to move on. Move on. I remember, I remember praying. I used to pray loads as a teenager. I prayed in my early 20s. I remember going to work. Even when I had kids, I remember going to work. Bear in mind, my kids are eight and five. So, you know, it's not that long ago. I remember going to work and praying that my family was going to be all right, praying that my wife and kids and me were going to have a good day and that my mum and dad and my family and friends and all my neighbours and relatives and all, you know, anybody else, whatever, blah, 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 would all have a good day and they'd stay free from pain and misery and all this sort of stuff, right? And that all... And God protected them all and nothing ever went wrong. Well, exactly. The point I'm making is that, no, as I started to, you know... Uh, get a little bit more. I don't want to call it wise, but for the sake, I don't want to sound egotistical. But as I started to look into stuff a bit more, I started to reflect a bit more. As I started to, as Mike Meyer says in Wayne's World, you started to get a little older, a little wiser, and got hurt in really weird places. I did. Do you know? I found. No, let's not. No, just kind of. Don't, I was going to say where I found the like, hair no. yesterday. Okay, yeah. um, it's probably better. I don't know. Anyway, it's worse than the racism thing. Go. Um, Go. So I. Um, I realised that my prayers weren't being answered. But that wasn't... Sometimes they were. Like, I'd have a day. No, listen, I'd have a day. I'd go to work, I'd say some prayers, right. and I'd come home, we'd have a... Maybe we've all had a, a relatively good day. We're definitely... No one's harmed. Quick phone call at the end of the night. Mum, you all right? Yeah, you're still alive? No injuries today? Great. Phone down. Blah, blah, blah. So, to an extent... Yeah, my prayers were hurt this morning. Make sure I say I'm on the way to work tomorrow. Exactly. Right? Now, exactly. So, as I got a little bit, uh, maybe more cynical 
with the world, cynical about myself, probably um, cynical about certain things that I'd not achieved, that I wanted to achieve, um, certain things that I was feeling a lot of pain about, certain family members who were experiencing a lot of difficulties in their life. I, I realized that, you know what? Maybe all this is just for nothing. And, you know, through meeting people like yourself and and watching a lot of comedy, I'm not I'm not saying I take my beliefs off what I see a comedian what a comedian says on stage, but you know, listening to people like Ricky Gervais, listening to people like Christopher Hitchens, like Sam Harris, you know, being introduced to uh a kind of a, a, a world that I'd not really paid attention to because yeah. A, I'd never had reason to and B, I'd just never had the opportunity to, I'd imagine. Coming com- I- com- is a, a beautiful way to, to get through it though because it is. With it, that, that's one of the things, you know, like uh, Monty Python's The Life of Brian and, uh, l- l- well, lots of comedy uh, or even, should I say, the ability to, to use comedy, just simply the ability to ridicule. It's so, it's so important. I know a lot of people think, Oh, look at those strident atheists taking the piss out of uh, religious people. Oh, it's easy to attack them. And yeah. but, like, but really, if you didn't have the ability to ridicule, what you would have is a totalitarian regime. That's, yeah. that's just what would happen. Yeah. The 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 um when when uh, the churches had power and they were beyond contestation, that was it. If you took the piss out of the pope, you would be dead. One 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 of the one of the thing you know like burnt at a stake, broken on a Catherine wheel, whatever. Um. Just simply me being able to tweet the Pope. I know it's probably not the Pope who's running the account, but he'll tweet like a... It's my mum, actually. He'll, he'll, tweet, he'll tweet something like... She got a part-time like, job. It was like a, a, a retirement plan. Sorry. I'm trying to get He'll tweet something like, you know, uh, be be mindful of young people. They are the future. You know, some shit like that. Yeah. And and and, it, and it, it's amazing for me and other people to just be, be able to just say... Yeah, you should have told your priest that. My ability to say that it it, it gives me a little sparkle because I just think yeah. I live in an age where I can do or say these things, and so many people before me. Like, people, people Wait, think, people think that atheism's a new thing, and it's not. Let me. Well, yeah. All I'm saying is, comedy is a, is an amazing window to enlighten people's minds. Two things: the ability to say the piss means that you actually get you, something from it. it. It allows you to deconstruct something properly. You're right about people in the past blah blah blah. something I wanted to say before I think it's relevant to what you just said Uh, I believe that we are extremely privileged to be able to not just question religion but to not believe in God in general right so I'm not and before you jump in and say oh well that's that's why we should fight because the Catholic Church or the, the other churches, religions are suppressing people who have lack of education, lack of knowledge, who are impoverished and blah blah blah. So you know, we we as the lucky ones should be fighting against these regimes. I get all that, right? I get that. But if if you live, if if your life here on Earth which is the only life that we actually know about that it actually exists. A great caveat. Um, is absolute torture from start to finish. And there are so many millions of people whose lives are awful. I mean, you know, you say you watch the news and you see people sat usually, there usually with... because of religious oppression. Now, no, but, no, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, okay. But, you know, a lot of it's political. It's all about money at the end of the day, right? It's all about money, isn't it? It's usually about religion. Okay, but it's about money as well. There's some money, it must have religion. You know, I, I watch the news. <laughs> we'll, we'll get into that in a minute. Yeah, I watch the news and I'll see people who are sat there under a tree with flies on the face. And they're about three stone wet through. And I think, that's your life. Don't, don't try to stop them from having hope that there might be something better to look forward to. So in other words, I don't prescribe to what they believe and I might not prescribe to the religion or the the, the religious organisation that is promoting something to these people, right? But for whatever reason, the religion is getting through. 
right? The religions are getting through to these people, right? The religions are actually providing some kind of hope to these people. My parents go to Bolivia to work with very under, underprivileged people and they meet people who who have short life expectancies, who live on the streets, who never have, who will never have anything, right? In, can, can, in Relative to the things we have, right? Mm -hmm. They might have a few clothes on the back. They, they scratch around to get some food and that's them, right? That That's them. That's, that's how they live. Without the dream of an afterlife, without the dream, the hope of a heaven of some sorts, whatever that means to them, these people are screwed because their life isn't going to improve, right? That person's life is not going to improve here and now. It's not because the government that they that is kind of in power in their country is not going to make their life better. It might in the long run, change over time but that person those thousands millions of people who are living right now their life's not going to improve and the only thing that gets them through is thinking that there might be something afterwards and they go on pilgrimages they go and they, they chip off pieces of rock from caves that they think is holy rock that's going to bring some kind of luck and fortune and some kind of meaning to their lives right Obviously, we know that that's just rock, right? And that 100-mile pilgrimage that they've just made is just good exercise. <laughs> we know that. There's so many people whose lives are shite, are horrible, horrible lives. Right, you've talked about this for too long. Sorry, Sweden. <laughs> okay, uh, I want to tell you why I think you're wrong. Not in a, not in a, not in a dispute kind of like, not in a debate kind of way, but I, I just, I just want to clarify a couple of things. One, one of the things is, is yes, uh, religion gives people hope in, in desperate times. It's one of the reasons that people always, uh, they, they, they misquote, uh, the, you know, you know, you know, you've heard the, the whole, um, religion is the opium of the people. You've heard that. The opium of the masses is what oh, I've okay. heard. Opium of the masses, yeah. I win. By who? George Orwell. Mm, Marx. Damn! <laughs> uh, anyway, right, okay, it's, it, it's, it's the opium of the masses, right? Uh, but it's, it's usually used, it's usually pretending that it was dismissed as the opium of the people. Like, like oh, believe in God, it's just a drug, right? But it, it, it's, it, when, when you actually look at the, when you actually look at it, it says about, um, it's, the, it's the sigh of the oppressed people and all that kind of stuff. It, mm -hmm. it, 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 it explains that it, it serves a purpose. It's not saying, oh, it's just a drug for everyone. It's saying that it, it provides that hope. Okay. Um, and, and honestly, if people need hope in a desperate situation, I'm not, I'm not going to be the one who's going, well, I'm an atheist, so screw you. Mm -hmm. um, there's a there's a, a woman that I follow on uh, Twitter, uh, simply known as Ra. Okay, uh, hope she's listening as well because she's pretty cool. Um, and it, and and she, she was uh, she was in a bit of a Twitter rant with somebody the other day, and uh, she she's a nurse and she was saying that to this person that um you know she she's glad that they have some fairy tales. So she twatted a nurse basically. <laughs> they twatted the nurse. Uh, the the, the, the nurse Ra. She says. Uh, I think he's called Sarah in real life. That is the past twen tense for Twitter, isn't it? About twatted. So, the, the, past, the past tense for Twitter is to have twatted. Yeah. Uh, so, so Ra twatted. That, um, <laughs> she, she was saying that what, she's been she's been at bedsides when people have been dying. So she's saying, you know, if, they, if whatever they want to believe, it's going to... Sick. The, she the, sounds the, sick. Gonna, <laughs> perverted. The, 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 whatever's going to give them a, like a sort of, I say, a safe passing, like what, whatever, whatever will help them out in their time of need... Is happy for them to believe that, but she's an ardent atheist. You know what I mean? She she will just she will. Just so what if someone believes that just before you die, you should be masturbated? By a nurse. <laughs> masturbated? <laughs> would Raj masturbate you just before Ra. you die? Not Raj. Oh, Ra. Sorry. R A H Ra. Apologies, Ra, and Switzerland. So we've, I'm getting around all the countries we need to apologise to what a for the one right, stop, person that's listening. Stop it. Uh, Sorry. Right, so, 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 she, so she says when she's at a bedside, you know, if, if, people, if people need that, they get that, that you know, like mm. what, not the, not the molestation, the, 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 the happy fairy tales that's going to help them, Yeah. Uh, you know, in their hour of need, that's fair enough. And, and 
I'd like to say, as an atheist, I don't really know many atheists that would say, no, destroy them. Can I stop you on set? Okay, yeah. Um, Monsieur Gervais. Yeah. Invention of lying. Yeah. Um, he brought up a, a true story in his life that apparently his mum, when she was more or less on her deathbed, um, asked him if there was heaven, if heaven existed, or if God yeah, was, yeah, it's quite, or if it's, God it's, was real. I can't remember. I think really, it was if... Yeah, it's quite touching, isn't it? You know, like to say that it's just yeah. like a bit of a silly comedy. And, and at the time, Ricky Gervais was wholly atheist. You know, he was, he, he pro- properly, all his eggs were in that atheist basket there. Yeah. And he chose to say, "Of course they are. Of course, of course, heaven's yeah, real, mum." Because, like, be, being atheist doesn't mean that you're. And I, I don't really have another. I don't really have another better word for it. But I'm not religious. Word soulless. <laughs> no. um, the, the, it, yeah. does, it doesn't yeah, mean yeah. you're. It doesn't mean you're a callous, soulless bastard that would. Say, but there is a fine line. Look, look, right, no, whoa, 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 whoa. No afterlife. No, but there is a fine line because. <laughs> at what point does someone become incapable of hearing the truth? Answer that. What does that even mean? Okay, so Ricky Gervais's mum yeah. asks him something along the lines of, is heaven real? Yeah. When she's very close to her death. Mm-hmm. Okay. At that point, he felt the best answer was to say, yeah. And she smiled and she found that consoling. Yeah. Sometimes I would argue that people who are well and truly alive and not very close to death. They also need to hear that just to get a feeling of hope. You could put a smile on someone's face by saying that my children go to a Catholic school and that's another, might be another podcast, I don't know. It's a difficult subject for me because at the moment, I know it's a great school. I know that they feel loved and cared for there and they're flourishing there. And I, I might be wrong, but I do believe that some of the teachings are really nice. You know, there's a there's very much a focus on the what, what Jesus said and this, that, and the other, and, and, and how, you know, it was all, it was essentially, let's was it, think was, about the poor. Was it things that Jesus said, like, I came not to bring peace, but the sword? Exactly that. Probably not. And my daughter comes back and says, Dad. Where's my sword? Where's my sword? Cause I, for I do not bring peace tonight. And I say, darling... I love you very much. Damn, you've had too much sugar. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, now here, drink your whiskey. No, but <laughs> the point is, I, 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 I do believe that that there's a very caring culture in that school, and it happens to be a Catholic school, and probably there are certain aspects of the caring culture. That you kind of credit to being a religious school. Now listen to me one second. I've been into my daughter's school to pick them up, and they are yeah. singing some hymns together, beautiful hymns, right? Really got lovely the whole songs. World. In his lap, he's got the whole <laughs> no, um, right? But the point is, not only do they sing together, yeah. but sometimes some of those hymns are purely about the needy, the poor, helping people, right? Mm-hmm. Not much of a mention of God. You know, and even if there is a mention of God, it's still focused on be, trying to be a good person, right? Now, yeah, it is now. I'm not saying it is now in a secular society. Okay, Carry yeah, on, but I'm not. Yeah, I'm not saying that that means Catholicism is right, or that means you should believe in X, Y, and Z. Mm. But I do think that religion is obviously. Um, ahead of the game in certain aspects of life that bring some kind of spiritual hope yeah, you know yeah. do you know what I'm saying I'm not it's yeah. nothing to do with what's true it's nothing to do with what's yeah, true yeah, it's got yeah, nothing yeah. to do with what is actually well, provable true or yeah. real but you know like when you watch a film and you and you watch it and you and you, and it touches your heart and you and you feel great at the end of it and you go oh that's amazing that's beautiful a film and it's made up, right? And it's yeah. not even based on a true story. And you go, oh, that's what a great film. You can wait. Yeah, For exactly. a couple of hours, yeah, yeah, you feel yeah. great. Religion, to some people, does yeah. that it create, all it, the time. It creates those parables that are, that are about being a good person. You know more about the Bible because the religion you were raised in requires you to 
study the Bible properly. In the Catholic religion, it's a lot more wishy-washy than people think it is, right? Most people who you would call a Catholic aren't really Catholic. So that occasionally we've had debates, arguments, what discussions. Is, what, is a real, what would you define as a real Catholic, though? Uh, well, what would you say? Oh, that's a, that's a real Catholic. nowadays. Nowadays, I would say not not what's a real Catholic. That that's means, the wrong that, question. That means these days, if you're American, that's the wrong question, right? <laughs> what, in my opinion, a an average Catholic? I think that's a best. I think that's the best question. What is an average Catholic? No, no, I'm saying what would you define as a proper? What's, what is a proper Catholic? Okay, it's the point. And this is the point I'm making. Yeah. What you would regard potentially as a real Catholic or a proper Catholic doesn't all, doesn't exist in the masses, if you like. Most Catholics are, I know, most Catholics, uh, sorry, uh, Mr. Watchtower was holding up a bottle of empty red wine then. The second empty bottle of red wine. Uh, he had a look of disbelief. Where's Jesus when you need him? With loads of water. Exactly. Let's... Mostly practical. There's a community spirit involved, right? People from essentially all walks of life. And when I say all walks of life, I mean old to young go to this place every week and more than once a week. Sometimes there's things that happen during the week, there's summer fairs, there's stuff that goes on. So there's a community feel to it, right? People like to be involved in the community, right? Secondly, um, there's the idea that it's good to go to church. You've been raised with that idea that you, you're you going to probably be a better person if you go to church. So right. especially when people have children, they think, ooh, yeah. I must take my kids to church because it's a good chance. I've heard a lot of oh. former Catholics that, that say things like, like when, when, I, when I've spoken to them about the faith, you know, just like probing questions. Like I want, like my, my, my main thing in life, like I've said on the website, watchyourownawakening.com, uh, I've, 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 I've explained that... Um, like my preoccupation in life is I want to know what people believe and why because because I have no belief I don't you know like I don't have mm -hmm. the ability to believe it's just as really as simple as that so I'm curious for what reason do people believe like how do you how do you jump that fence like wh where does the belief I begin? think it's pure and for, oh, sorry, and for, and for what for what reason I, I want to know the specific reasons not I believe in a God That's well this is what I'm saying quite often people who are Catholic, I'm talking about Catholics because I I've, was raised a Catholic. Yeah. Um, but I'd imagine this kind of, this this is similar for most religious people um, or people who are part of a religious organisation. It's purely that you've been raised into it and something about it has connected with you, Right. Something about it is connected with you. Whatever that is, whether it be that you just want to please your parents and it's a way to please your parents or it's that you feel that if you go to church once a week, you're a better person. One point I was going to make, there's the community spirit, but there's also the fact that, that there's not many places that you can go to where for roughly an hour you can focus on A, your wrongdoings, aka sins, right? Yeah. B, other people's needs, right? Where you can genuinely just pause for thought and say, I've been a bit crap this week. I've been nasty to me, brothers and sisters, or whatever. I've been a bit greedy. Shouldn't have shag that process here on Saturday night, you know, that sort of thing, right? Or, um, you know, thinking of the, the poor, the needy, and where there's a, someone at the front, the priest or whatever, who's, who's actually encouraging you to get out and help that homeless person who's sat in the town centre to, to go and, you know, uh, find a way of... They call it serving the church, right? Or serving God. But essentially, what they're saying is, go and... They're saying serve the community. Yeah, exactly. You know, there, there might be... One thing that's said in church that you can easily miss if you don't go to somewhere like a church. What about the old people who are knocking about? 
right? There's a lot of old people who get totally ignored and it's they get ignored because they just happen to get old on you, right? They just people get old on you, right? They just yeah. get old and they weren't old before, so you never had to pop round to their house. So there was no reason to go and knock on someone's door and go, Are "You all right?" Because they were fine. Or you go, "Well, you're old. You can look after yourself." Are you all right? No, I'm pretty old. Yeah, exactly. But but the point is, people get old to the and they get to the point where they can't look after themselves. Are and, we going to alienate the old now, as well as the countries yeah, and the races? Yeah. And... So let's yeah. So uh, the old are worse than the blacks, if you ask me. No, I'm joking. Oh, what rather can I just say? Can I just say for the for what if they're old black? For the record, I've got some amazing black friends so i'm allowed to be racist to black people oh that's an awful thing to say yeah, my, my 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 daughter's godfather's black so that that that's fine i can verify that as a fact yeah, yeah. so i can definitely be racist can i he's, can i he's properly can i be racist now. if my god da- my daughter's godfather's black i don't think there's any i don't think there's, i don't think there's anything that that allows you to be racist what if i was married to a black person Oh, that for sure. <laughs> what if my mum was black? Can I be, can I be racist then? Uh, Damn. There's no... Do you know, I keep trying to find ways, reasons to be racist, and there's just none for me. No. Just, no. I mean, you could, be, you could be religious, and that would give you that would give you a great persuasion. It would, actually. I might be. What what religion would give me the uh, excuse to be racist? I guess just any fundamentalist Christianity, you know, like... We're like Catholic the, included. Well, yeah, That'd be easier for me because yeah, I've got the birth certificate and everything, so I can just join again. Anything that's happy with the uh, with the Old Testament, you know, like where God is sort of like yeah. genocidal, is racist, infanticide. Oh, Catholics like aren't. That. They don't. They're not into all that anymore. It's Listen. all New Testament stuff. No, it's all New Testament. Trust me. Trust me. It is. Trust me. <laughs> trust me. Right, can we just be more linear? About forty-five minutes that have gone by okay. because I'm gonna have to cancel this down. I'm just gonna summarize the whole thing, guys. Some people need hope. And some people get hope from religion. But no matter what hope they get from religion, doesn't make it true. That's I would about, agree with that. That's about the whole thing. I would agree it? with that. The whole gist. It's, mm-hmm. like, it's like, look, it provides things for people. Which is why, um, I'm, I was about to say the British Humanist Association, because I just so happen to be in Britain, but there's Humanist Associations all over mm-hmm. the world. Um, the Humanist Associations, they're, they're trying to create now, because they, they fully acknowledge that religion... Create, creates this this ability to, to sort of, it galvanises people, it brings people together, it gets people to think about certain issues. So that's what humanist associations are trying to bring together. They're, they're, if, you, if you are a human and you believe that other humans should be equal to you, then why not think about those humans? And, and it doesn't matter about you know, the sexual orientation or the... I think it does. I'm joking, I don't. I know, I know, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. in, 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 I'm only joking, I don't, real, I don't. In real life, uh, race, creed, wh- whatever, uh, sexual orientation, doesn't matter. If you're a human being, you deserve the fundamental rights that a human being... What about creed? <laughs> Look, if you're a human being, you deserve the rights of But what about creed? Being. What about it? Because surely... Right, so you've got obviously race, sex, mm. um, sexual orientation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But creed, yeah. surely, that's what you believe. Yeah, but it doesn't mean that you don't get your fundamental rights. Oh no. You can't say, "Well, you fancy men, so you're stupid," <laughs> or, "Or you're." <laughs> Norris, go home. You're drunk. Uh, you're, for, you're from wherever. Well, you're stupid. What I'm saying is, as a humanist, I can speak. I've got a few caps that I can wear. Yeah, my atheist cap. Okay. I can put my theist cap on occasionally, but I don't like to wear it for too long. You can take it off now. I don't like that. It's color. off. Good. Uh, the humanist cap. It's just about equality, really. It's just. It's just about. Why's that humanist cap got two beer cans attached to the side of it and a straw? <laughs> it's got some clapping hands as well. If you, <laughs> if you pull down the street. The hands clap, and one one hand is white, one's black, and one's one's male and one's female from the clap. Oh together. God! Just trying to please the masses. It's awful. To please it's awful. And the, and the um, so as a humanist, it, it, it's it's just it, you should have a crucifix sorry, in the middle. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. It's, it's just it's purely about being a human, and you deserve equal rights. So yeah, that's true. So. If you be- you can literally believe whatever you damn well please, and most atheists, or rather, like like I said before, atheists can be an a- you can be an atheist and be an asshole. You can be an atheist and be an absolute nut job. It doesn't it doesn't matter. Like you can be 
anyone. But you're still be. better than a religious person. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's what it. I think that's sorry. so. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. 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 No matter what, what religion, what bothers me is that as soon as they claim rights, they 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 want special rights. They want rights to. They want rights to stop people from doing things that they want to do. Like what? Um, the 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 old sort of like. The, um, I'm not. Really, I'm not sure. Where, I'm not sure who's attributed to this, but basically, the the, the saying goes: um, "Your right to swing your fist ends at my face. You can do whatever you want. My right to swing my fist ends in my bedroom. <laughs> you you can swing your fist around as much as you want. You can point to the thin air because the thin air. I got that in the wedding vows. Sorry. The thin air will do nothing back to you, and you're not punishing anybody. It's a victimless crime to punch the air. Yeah. If, you, if you punch me because I'm another sentient being, you don't get to do that. It's not fair. Okay. Mm-hmm. So just like that with your ideology, if you want to believe, if you want to believe in anything you want, believe it. But then if you claim special rights or the fact that you get to oppress people or you get to suppress people, it doesn't matter what, what you've decided upon, you have, you have no right to stop that person from having their basic rights. Mm-hmm. That makes sense? Yeah, totally. So atheists sense. don't care that people think things. They care that that simple things like, you know, Christians have like uh, tax exempt status for things when the money's just going into people's pockets. Um, when, when you, when you get like a church roofs that are, that are rebuilt based on tax paying money because yeah. of the general census, even though most people are just cultural Christians and they will never visit that church. It's things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, shall we keep this linear? Like my penis. Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Right, Does Lenny uh, mean straight? Right, we've got... <laughs> just, yeah, following a straight... And hard. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Destroyed, hard. sorry, that's the rioch. Right. rioch. right, listen to me. Okay. I'm about to do the news. Do the news then? Because we, we, we really need to wrap this up, because <laughs> if anyone's ever going to revisit, they need to know that we're going to have to like, have some kind of structure. Why? There's no structure at the minute. Why? We've both had. Why does have to be structure? We've both had a few glasses of wine. Why does there have to be structure? Too long. Just because all the podcasts I... have structure. Oh, let's regurgitate what other people have done. No. Seriously, let's just say, right, we're having a podcast just... about this. It will end when it ends, and then people, whoever wants to listen, not can listen. You. They don't have to... Yeah, it's not for you. <laughs> it's for me. Listen, Norris has better things to do than squeeze his thoughts into one hour to suit the podcast listener, right? The point is, no, Norris... has too many thoughts. Norris will speak until Norris is finished speaking. Norris also <laughs> speaks about himself in the third person, which is a classic <laughs> sign of... A classic sign of megalomaniacal. Egomaniac. Uh, right, yeah. stop it. Norris also uh, needs we, a wee. We have, we have to wrap <laughs> Really badly. Okay. I'm really badly. I've well, had, like, then, nearly a bottle of wine and well, I need then, a wee. Then that means that we have to wrap it up pretty soon, right? We should probably mean to uh, release this as like, I'll condense it into like an hour podcast, mm-hmm. but then we should probably do like an unedited version just for people that actually like us. Yeah. yeah? One's like for, one's for like, um, you know, like ideas and things that are happening in the world. Obviously not this one because it's a pilot, so we're just dicking around. But, but like then we should do like a, like a one hour podcast that, that I've, I'm very regimented about and make mm-hmm. sure it's an hour. Yeah. And then underneath it. I like like podcast, a dictatorship. Like, <laughs> yeah. And then, and then, hey, I tell you what, there's some good teachings in the Catholic Church that'll help you to organize and control that podcast. We've got to organize it. Church usually lasts an hour. <laughs> church usually lasts an hour. <laughs> you go and ask the local priest yeah. and say, How do you keep church an hour? Because you've got to talk about all sorts yeah. of shit. <laughs> he goes, I'll tell you how you do it. You suppress the congregation. <laughs> they don't say shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I will, I will, you tell them what to say and they just to... say it. That's it. I want to be able to like talk about things freely though without having to touch kids. You ready? Yeah, I'm white. <laughs> right, so I'm about to read you the news. Go. You're, you're going to get three headlines, individual headlines, and then you're going to decide which one you think is true. I'm going to go into a little bit more detail and you're going to decide, okay. It's like a little game I'm going to play. It's like, um, it's a little bit like what I lie to you. Yeah? Okay. So one of these stories is suitably ludicrous mm-hmm. and yet believable. You ready? So one of them is false or one of them is true? One of them is false, two is true. Okay, go. In total, there is three. Go. Okay, here comes the news with what Sharon Awakening. 
do 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 Bob's Twitter account was recently hacked by the entity known as Anonymous, resulting in tweets that named and shamed paedophile priests. 2. Conservatives in America declared war on the Girl Scouts by attempting to boycott cookie sales. 3. Israel produced a pro-circumcision short film to fight opposing views. Okay. That right there is the news headline. Would you like some more details? Yes, please. <laughs> Number one, so, so, so some, some, some of these someone complained about the Pope I'm, on YouTube I'm gonna, on, on, on Twitter. Well, I'm going to give you a little bit more detail and go. I'm, I'm, I'll let you into a secret. Some of the some of the quotes may or may not be true because I may have been a bit silly. But okay, go. Okay. Cool. The Bot's Twitter account was recently hacked by an entity known as Anonymous. We know them. We, we know Anonymous, don't we? Okay. Yeah, don't well, we? Yeah. who? Anonymous, the group known as Anonymous. No. Yeah. Really? Twitter. The, the group that's been in the news and stuff, known as Anonymous. No. Really? Mate, I, wow. I, I, I rear children. That's amazing. Okay. Um, anonymous is basically a group of um, of anonymous people who are, uh, let's say, they're, they're, they are they they know what they're doing as far as technology is concerned and things like that. And they've, they've hacked certain places and they're, they're, they're sort of, they're responsible for being, uh, they're keeping the eye on the world and they're okay. sort of, um, I don't know how you'd explain them. We'll just get you to have a look at them. Okay. Yeah, we'll get you to Google them. If you haven't heard of Anonymous, uh, if you listen to I'll the podcast, I'll check them on my qu- Twitter account later. Yeah, maybe you should open a Twitter account. And then all the hate mail that comes to me about you, you can just have directly. Yeah. That's probably better. Anyway. Sounds good. The bot Twitter account was recently hacked by the entity known as Anonymous, resulting in tweets that named and shamed paedophile priests. Pope Francis said, This is outrageous. Holy Mother Church has been hurt, violated, and demands justice immediately. Anonymous said, Think on that a while. We're busy hacking dictionary.com so we can redefine the word irony. I think that's false. Really? Yeah. Why? Because he called it Holy Mother Church. And to me. What Catholics call it? I've never met a Catholic who calls it Holy Mother Church. But he's the Pope. I've never met a Catholic who calls it Holy Mother Church. Wow. I think well, it's I'll, false. I'll, I'll, I'll do, I'll do next to him. We'll decide whether or not. We'll, we'll decide how false it is. Uh, okay. Plus, if my dad's name's on there, I'm not. I'd rather it be false. Go on. Two. Uh, conservatives in America de- declare war on Girl Scouts by attempting to boycott cookie sales. This was due to conservatives whipping themselves into a frenzy because the Girl Scouts are affiliated with a group that is, in turn, affiliated with a larger group that made a, sen- a statement about maternal health and gender equality. The conservative news network Brit Brit Bart, I think I've got that right, Brit Brit Bart, said, a part of every Thin Mint and Dorsey Daw, every Samoa and Savannah Smile goes to support abortion advocacy. I think it's just important here to, to, to explain that because we're British, we don't really necessarily know what a Thin Mint, a Dorsey Daw, a Samoa or Savannah Smile actually is, but I'm pretty sure they're all types of cookie. I think it's false. Not because it couldn't be true, but because you'd have to be a real loser to make all that up. Mm. So, so they're both what false. What detail? I did explain that only one of them is false, but they're both false so far, according to you. Really? Only one's false, yeah. Okay, then out of the two. Yeah. Sorry, I think. Sorry, it's a lie. I think that's true. I, you know, I said that. I think it's false. Wait, no, I think I it's do, true. Do, Even do, though I think it's a stupid story, yeah. I think it's true simply because the detail's impeccable. And if you made it up, well, well done. Thanks. You've gone uh, to stupid lengths. Go on. Yeah, you're right. Uh, okay, number three. Don't lie. Go on. Israel produced... Uh, they, these are all stories like within the last couple of months, okay? Uh, Israel produced a pro-circumcision short film to fight opposing views that circumcising an eight-day-old baby is, quote, a violation of the physical integrity of children. The director of the film said, the difficulty with a short film like this is that there has to be a lot of cuts. A sportsperson... Hey! Who, good pun. Sorry. A sportsperson... <laughs> For the Council of European Parliamentarians, who are opposing circumcision, said, 
the difficulty with a short film like this is that there has to be a lot of cuts. <laughs> good yeah, pun. I recognise. Yeah, I recognise the pun. Now. So, so yeah, let's just let, let's I, now. I, let's just say that the quotes that I've used, some of them are real, some of them are not. But one of those uh, is false. What, what one one of those stories is false. <sighs> Which one is it? Right. I think the middle one. The middle one. Is full of. Conservatives in America declare war on Girl Scouts by attempting yeah, to boycott yeah, cookie yeah, sales. Yeah. As, as, as stupid a story as it is, as silly as it is, I think that's true just simply because there's a lot of detail in there that, you know, names of cookies and stuff that I just... If you could be bothered to research all that... Just a quick Google search. Yeah, but yeah, then it'd be a true story, wouldn't it? No, I mean, like, I could have invented the story and just Google search what cookies are called. Okay, I think number two and three are true, and number one is false. Two and three is true, number one's false. The yes. Pulse Twitter account was hacked by Entity Nolan and Yeah, go on. Do it, tell me what it is, tell me what I know. Three out of three, all right. Is that right? Yeah, you told it right, yeah. Boom! Totally right. Yes. I decided that that, 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 that's, that sounds plausible. If you knew we were anonymous, watching, oh no, it sounds it, plausible. It, it, it sound when horrible. you said Mother Church, in my head, no, call me a Catholic, <laughs> right? But the point oh, is, I've never do such an insult. Like that. in, that's, that's ridiculous. Well, no, you you know, you call me a racist, but not a Catholic. Um, no, yeah, uh, all the two are usually intertwined. But well, yeah, yeah. Um, when I heard the Mother Church, so I thought I've never heard that. I've never heard that. Now you might say that you're a Catholic. Yeah, I've never heard it. Oh, you were a Catholic. I've never heard it. No, it doesn't matter. Never heard it. So I've been to church, like, probably in the last six months. Wow, okay. Anyway, conservatives in America declared war on Girl Scouts by attempting to boycott cookie sales. That's like a true thing. Because because the, the Girl Scouts, um, uh, this happened very recently as well, but just like, you know, Christian religious fervor sometimes reach, reaches like fever pitch, uh, in America this kicked off because... Just like usual, the Conservatives uh, grabbed something that somebody said and ran with it. It actually happened a few years ago. I think it was like 2010, maybe. Uh, maybe 2012, I'm not too sure. But but it was long enough ago for it to no longer be a big deal. Okay, But what happened was the, conser- the Conservatives whipped themselves up into a frenzy because a group that the Girl Scouts are, are associated with, they're affiliated with another group, and the group basically speaks on... They have like a young person's... Um, the, the name of it but but basically it was like an equality thing and they sort of spoke to to uh, lesbian and gay transgender rights uh, and it was kind of like a very good healthy kind of we're all in this together kind of thing what do transgender people know about cookies that's going to be pretty much the end mm-hmm. right um, the future podcast will they'll have to be a little bit more linear we'll, we'll actually have a proper topic of discussion rather yep. than just random stuff uh, but this was just basically like an introduction to, to me, introduction to you, uh, so that people know what they're dealing with. And uh, that's gonna be pretty much it. So, that, so the, ne- the next time you hear from us, <laughs> we'll have something a little bit more, uh, what shall we say? I've got one question. A, l- a little bit more direct. We'll have a bit more of a, no, of a point. Hopefully it'll be more long-winded, less focused, <laughs> and more boring for the listener. Um, but more entertaining for us. Uh, I've got one question. Yeah. Can I put Charles back on? Of course you can. I've got a second question. Go on. Can I put my bra back on? I didn't even know you took your bra off. I didn't. Although I prefer you without it. <laughs> I took my nipple tassels <laughs> off, but I left my bra on. What, what do we know? We're heathens. We know nothing of morals. Exactly. Anyway, right. Okay, so until uh, until next month, I guess, or maybe a couple of weeks. I'm not too sure yet. It's just a pilot. Right. Oh, I've just remembered. You. Yeah. Listen. Go on. Uh, thanks for listening to us. <laughs> in, um, in fact, if, if you made it through, if you made it through the unedited version, presuming like an MP3 can even friggin' last this long, I'm going to try and do an, an, an unedited version of this. And if you manage to get through it all, I'd be very impressed because I don't think even I'm going to listen to all of this. If you get through the unedited version, I would probably actually invite you to my house. For a couple of drinks, simply because you must be very lonely. 
If you have an unedited version, um, I think I should quiz you via Twitter. You can explain to me exactly what we're talking about. And then you should definitely be on probably the first show that we do with some kind of live Skype calling. That, 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 that should definitely be the thing. Oh, I like that. You, you, you turned my insult into a positive. It's definitely positive. If you can listen to us for that long while we've had too much wine, then you're a legend. Right. Anyway, but for the abridged listeners... <laughs> ones who uh, left after it, 30 seconds... Yeah. <laughs> This is uh, th- this is going to be also the most important listeners, is, yeah. <laughs> the is, ones, uh, the voice of Watch Sharon Awakening uh, signing off, and uh, and Norris. We're only going to call him Norris, Norris and Watch Sharon Awakening. We're going to sign off, and uh, just remember, um, there is no God, but if He exists, um, may there He might strike be. me down.